Good morning. Good morning. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us greet one another in the name of the Lord. Peace be with you. Peace. 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 Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And together, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, not to be anxious about earthly things, but to love things heavenly, and even now, while we are placed among things that are passing away, to hold fast to that which shall endure through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the word. A reading from the book of Amos. Hear this, you that trample on the needy and bring to the ruin the poor of the land, saying, When will the new moon be over so that we may sell grain, and the Sabbath so that we may offer wheat for sale? We will make the epa small and the shekel great, and practice deceit with false balances, buying the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals, and selling the sweepings of the wheat. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of their deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 113, found in page, on page 756 in your Book of Common Prayer or in your bulletin. We will read Psalm 113 in unison. Hallelujah. Give, Give praise, you servants, servants of the Lord. Lord. Praise, praise the name of the Lord. Let the, Let the name of the Lord be blessed. From this time forth forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its going down. Let the name of the Lord be praised. The Lord is high above all nations. And his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, who sits enthroned on high, but stoops to behold the heavens and the earth? He takes up the weak out of the dust, and lifts up the poor from the ashes. He sets them with the princes, with the princes of his people. He makes the woman of a childless house to be a joyful mother of children. A reading from the letter of Paul to Timothy. First of all, I urge the supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for everyone, for kings and all who are in high positions, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all of godliness and dignity. This is right and is acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, there is also one mediator between God and humankind, Christ Jesus himself, human, who gave himself a ransom for all. This was attested at the right time. For this I was appointed a herald and an apostle, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to the disciples, There was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was squandering his property. So he summoned him and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Give me an accounting of all your management, because you cannot be my manager any longer. Then the manager said to himself, What will I do? Now that my master is taking my position away from me, I am not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. I have decided what to do. When I am dismissed as manager, people will welcome me so that people may welcome me into their own homes. So summoning the master's debtors one by one, he asked the first, How much do you owe my master? He answered, A hundred jugs of olive oil. He said to him, Take your bill, sit down quickly, and make it fifty. Then he asked another, and how much do you owe? He replied, a hundred containers of wheat. He said to him, take your bill and make it eighty. And his master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the children of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than they are with the children of life. And I tell you, Make friends for yourselves by means of dishonest wealth so that when it is gone, you may welcome, they may welcome you into eternal homes. Whoever is faithful in very little is faithful also in much. And whoever is dishonest in very little is dishonest also in much. If then you have not been faithful with the dishonest wealth, who will entrust you with the true riches. And if you have not been faithful with what belongs to another, who will give you what is your own? No slave can serve two masters. For a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. When I first looked at the readings for today, I figured, well, it's pretty much a a no-brainer. I will preach from the Gospel of of Luke. And many of you are probably familiar with Jesus' parable of the dishonest manager. And it's really simple. Uh, The guy is caught cheating his boss, embezzling from the company, and also uh, probably overcharging the clients as well. The boss caught him. He said, you're fired, but before you go, you have to set your affairs in order and try to restore some order to the business. And so the manager was thinking, well, what should I do? I don't want to have to actually work for a living uh, physically, and I'm too proud to beg. I don't want to go on welfare. So I think this is what I'll do. And he met with all of the clients, and he said, how much do you owe? And the client said, well, a hundred jars of oil. And the manager said, okay, make it 50 and you're good. And then he said the same thing to somebody else. How much do you owe the company? A hundred jars of this or that. He said, okay, you just owe 80 and that's good. You owe no more. And his reasoning was it was good PR for himself while trying to right the wrongs that he had done by previously embezzling. And he also had an ulterior motive. The ulterior motive was 
that hopefully those that he gave the break to would remember him favorably, and if he uh, needed a job in the future, they could put in a good word for him. Or if they were in a position to, if they had businesses of their own, they might be able to hire him. So he did the right thing with the wrong motive. And it shows that even though we may be Christians, we may be believers, we don't have to be stupid. You know, we can do the right thing and do it honestly to correct prior wrongs. So that's basically the gospel in, what, a minute or two it took me to say? So now I can say amen, and we can move on to the rest of the service, and you get out that much earlier. But I don't know if you remember the old uh, Popeil ads uh, for Vegematic and Pocket Fisherman, and the, the narrator would say, but wait, there's more. So there's more. You're not getting out of it that easily. So after I thought about doing the gospel, and I figured everybody's familiar with that anyway, how about if I do Paul's letter to Timothy? Now that doesn't come up that often in our lectionary cycle, and believe it or not, I've never preached from it. So I thought, well, this will be a good chance. So uh, the rest of the time will be Paul's letter to, to Timothy, and it's rather timely because he is exhorting those who hear him and read what he writes to pray for their leaders. Now in Paul's world, the context was the Roman Empire. So the leaders, of course, were the, the emperor, Augustus, and also his uh, appointees, which in many cases were client kings or puppet kings. Now, King Herod of, uh, of Judea, of Palestine, was one of those puppet kings. And there are different Herods in the Bible. The most well-known one is called Herod the Great, and he was the one who added to the temple complex. He, he loved engineering products. But he was also the one who ordered the murder of all baby boys two years and younger at the time that Jesus was born in Bethlehem because he had heard from the wise men that the Messiah would be born there. And the Messiah was believed to be a king. And he thought it would be a secular king rather than the king of heaven. So he thought, I'm going to nip this in the bud and I'll just have everybody killed who was born at around that time. So that was a Herod. His sons were also named Herod, and so there was a different Herod who was ruling uh, at the time of Christ and then afterwards. So these were the leaders that uh, Paul was saying that we should pray for. Uh, the emperor, without saying Caesar is Lord, and that got Christians into trouble later on. But also the local rulers, the kings, the, uh, the rulers' officials, such as the tax collectors, and you know that especially at that time the tax collectors were despised, even Jewish tax collectors, because they were considered to be agents of the Roman state. And as long as they got uh, enough for their bosses, their bosses didn't care if the tax collectors would skim a little more off the top and take some for themselves. So the Jewish tax collectors, as representatives of the Roman Empire, were also despised. So who wants to pray for leaders like that? Well, fast forward to our time. Is it really that much different? Now, I just want to say that I'm nonpartisan. I'm an independent. I'm neither a Republican nor a Democrat or any other political party. And so I try to be reasonably objective. And a reason I'm an independent is because I have a hard, tr a hard time trusting our secular rulers. There was a song that was popular when I was in college, and the last line was, meet the new boss, same as the old boss. And I thought that is simply a reflection of human nature. The more things change, the more things stay the same. And so I'm having kind of a difficult time trying to pray for these guys. In fact, I tell my kids when an election comes up, the best you can do is to find the candidate who is least noxious to you and hold your nose and vote. Vote for the lesser of the evils. And I always say it's important to vote because people died to secure us that privilege. So, but that leaves us with uh, leaders who in some cases are untrustworthy. Should we pray for them? Of course we should pray for them. Jesus said to pray for everybody. 
uh, whether they're our secular leaders, our religious leaders, our families, our friends, our bosses, those we work with or for, or those who work for us, it doesn't matter. We need to pray for them. It doesn't matter if I like them. It doesn't matter if I agree with their policies. We need to pray for them. You know, there's that uh, children's Sunday school hymn, Jesus Loves Me, This I Know, Because the Bible Tells Me So. Well, this is the case because the Bible tells us so. God wants us to pray for our, for our neighbors. And who is our neighbor? As the parable of the Good Samaritan says, our neighbor is everybody who's in need. So I'm basically a kind of cynical guy when it comes to the political process. Now, of course, we're supposed to pray for our enemies, too. And I don't consider our government leaders enemies at all. It's just not that I would voluntarily hang out with them or vote for them if it, if it was our choice, if we had better choices. Now, at Church of the Holy Spirit, we pray for our leaders, sacred and spiritual leaders, and many churches do that. And as is often the case, we mention some of our leaders by name. And at a church where I previously served, some years ago, uh, we would do the same thing. We would pray for our leaders, and often I led the prayers of the people, and uh, I would pray for the president, the vice president, for Congress, the Supreme Court, elected and appointed officials, governors, judges, uh, our armed services, our veterans, those who are sick, the dog catcher, whoever, I would pray for them. And one day after the service, a very active member uh, came up to me and vehemently objected because I prayed for the president by name. Now, this was a while ago. And he didn't like the president. And he didn't vote for that particular individual to be president. Therefore, he didn't want me to pray for the president. So I just exercised my gentle, compassionate, pastoral role, and I told him, too bad. We're going to pray for him anyway, because for one thing, Jesus tells us so, and for another thing, who needs prayers more than the leader of the greatest nation on earth? So, of course, you have to pray for them, whether you like them or not, whether they're your political enemy or not, we pray for them. Well, what do you pray for, especially if you don't like somebody? Well, you can still pray for their general health, their well-being, for their family, for their friends. We, we can pray for their protection from harm and that the Holy Spirit will guide them in their conduct and decisions that they make. And I can get behind that. I can get behind that easily. So our president sometimes says, well, he said more so on the campaign trail, he'd say, come on, man. And I, and I like that, actually. Come on, man, as far as praying is concerned. We know what's right. We just have to do it. So I pray for people that I love. I pray for people that I like. I pray for people that I respect. And Jesus said, well, of course you should do that. That's the easy stuff. But I'm also supposed to pray for those that I may not care for that much. I may pray for those who don't like me. I may pray for those who do things that I do not agree with. But what about all of the psychopathic dictators and mad kings and ruthless tyrants, bloodthirsty conquerors, sadistic autocrats, and entitled lords who have affiliated so much of human history. Don't forget, for all of our faults, we still have the best nation in the world. We have the best governmental form in the world. So the problems that we do have are shared to the nth degree by those in other countries and those in civilizations of the past. What about the truly horrible leaders that we've had as human beings? Those who commit murder, mayhem, maiming, rape, pillage, plunder, all of those things. And of course, a lot of that is going on in the world today. Do we pray for them? Well, yeah, we do. Because they may need prayers the most of all. And even because they have so much power, they have so much ability to harm innocent people. But that's the point. Even if prayer doesn't seem to change much on the outside, although it certainly can, when we pray, the very act, if we are sincere, changes us. 
It can change our attitudes. It can change our hearts. And it can be a blessing for those that we pray for, no matter who that might be. Amen. And that's as political as I get in the first. <laughs> Continuing on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer, let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are form four, found on page 388 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, pray for Igreja Episcopal Iglanacanga do Brazil. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, pray for St. Mark's Pro Cathedral Hastings. Reverend Katie Hargis, St. John's Harvard, Reverend Katie Hargis. In the DR, pray for St. Joseph of Arimathea Church, St. John the Baptist Church, and St. Nicodemus Church. In the parish cycle of prayer, pray for our Sunday school teachers. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for our president, Joe Biden, our governor, Pete Ricketts, and the elected officials of the communities in which we live, for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Scott, our bishop, and Tom, our priest, Terry, our postulate for the diaconate, guide them and the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours. We remember today those who serve our country at home and abroad, especially those who are deployed. Are there any? Those who travel, Rick S., Bob and Ruth R., are there others? Those celebrating birthdays this week, especially Donna B., Beckham C., 
Wesley C. Are there others? Those who anniversaries have anniversaries this week. Beth and Steve B. Are there others? Lord, grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we lift up those in our congregation and those we know who are ill, especially William R., Amber H., Emily W., Annie, Rich K., Jeannie, Greg L., Gordon H., Fran L., Marcy M., Roman F., Christy S., Patricia S., Fran, Rick D., are there others? We also pray for those with special concerns, especially the Pierce family, Shelley and Jeff B., Dara and Brian S., the Kaiser family, the Largent family, the Royal family, the Niedbalski family. Are there others? Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them to the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, especially Bill P., Greg L., Queen Elizabeth II, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with it all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people in the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with your whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Almighty God, whose will it is to hold both heaven and earth in the peace of your kingdom, give peace to your church, peace among nations, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts. All this we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice to God.
usual Eucharistic prayer C, found on page 369 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. You lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets and their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal element, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through the prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood he reconciled us. By his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was handed over, the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thank you, and remember that Christ died for you and feed on them in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving.
Continuing on page 366 in the Book of Common Prayer, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. In the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Please be seated for our announcements. Well, good morning, everyone. A little rumble of thumber, thunder out there. Hopefully it didn't rain too much or at all. It, it, pardon? Yeah. Um, well, at least we got a new roof, so we should be, we should be okay. Um, with all the rain, um, I am going to be calling Shady Lane Ranch this morning after service just to make sure we're still on, to make sure that the trails aren't too wet for our horseback ride today. So if you have signed up, please, uh, if you don't hear from me, everything is good. If you're watching us online, if you don't get a phone call from me, we are still on um, for horseback riding. Uh, we will leave here at the church at 1 o'clock. Um, if you're meeting us out there, please be there by 1.45. We had a great time at Valley's yesterday. Uh, the group was a little bit smaller than we anticipated, but it worked out just fine. Next Saturday, Mobile Food Pantry. Um, this Thursday, I'll be putting out an announcement on Facebook. If you already like our Facebook page, when you see that announcement come out, please share it. Um, we really want to make sure we're getting the information out as much as we can. Uh, you may wonder how many of your friends really need it, but you never really know. So just share it with your friends. If it winds up in California, who cares? They'll call, they'll call the church and say, where are you? And I'll say, Omaha, Nebraska, and they'll go, oh, never mind. <laughs> I've had it happen. Um, it's amazing how far the news really spreads. So, uh, but please, share it this week. Um, youth group, uh, there's a sign-up sheet down in the, at the Spirit Hum for Papio Fun Park in two weeks. Uh, Please mark your calendars. Pet blessings coming up. So if you have a pet, furry, not furry, big, little, it's okay. October 2nd, 2 o'clock, we will hold a service out here on the lawn, weather permitting. If not, we'll come inside in the parish hall, and we will do a, a quick prayer service, and then we will do a blessing of the animals. Um, also, beginning in the first two weeks in October, uh, you can see it in here. We're going to begin our collection for laundry bas baskets for vets, for moving vets forward. Um, this year we're just going to take in donations instead of items. Uh, if you could donate $25 for a basket, we would appreciate that. Our goal this year is at least 25 to 30 baskets. Um, I think we did 30 last year, so we're hoping to, to match that again. Now, I know we have a couple of birthday boys here, because I can hear them. Is Donna online, do you know? Oh, okay. Okay. How you doing there, big guy? So, you guys are going to be how old? Five. Five? That's a big number. It takes all the fingers on one hand. Next birthday, you're going to use two hands, don't you? So this time it's only one hand though, right? Okay, we're going to say a little prayer for you. Is that all right? All right. Please join me. Oh God, our times are in your hands. 
Look with favor, we pray, on these, your servants, as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You guys have a happy, happy birthday this week. Are you going to have a big party? Is everybody in church invited? Yes. <laughs> one yes, one no. That's okay. <laughs> All right. You guys want to hang out with me and walk out with me? All right. Oh, Oktoberfest tickets. That's right. Not in the bulletin. They're on sale downstairs. Please see Sharon. The price did go up this year. It's twelve fifty. Oktoberfest is uh, Friday, October fourteenth, um, and we begin at seven p.m. Thank you. Come over here with me, guys. Let's go forth in the name of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.